here for Tarot Tuesday. I'm going to give you, I'm going to sage. So um, we're going to talk about a couple of things tonight with Tarot Tuesday. But I'm going to give a couple of minutes for everyone to come on. The notification just went out. I'm going to be coming on live tomorrow as well around 8.30 um, to answer any questions that anybody has on the empower yourself to healthier relationships. So um, just know that that's what's happening tomorrow night. Um, if you're here, say hi. If you're catching the replay, hashtag replay, let me know. Let me know what questions you have for tonight about tarot. Um, I have been getting some side questions, so I'm going to address some of those. Um, but if you have questions, let me know so I can help you out. I want, you know, everyone to be able to connect to their intuition and, um, you know, dive in and do everything. So, hey, Linda and Amanda. Hello, hello. All right. So tonight, um, a lot of people are texting me about, um, you know, receiving their first deck, what to do with it, how to connect with it. And so there's a bunch of things that you can do in order to connect with your deck. So one thing that I do is when I get a deck that I'm really looking forward to using is I will take it and I will sleep with it. I'll open it up, you know, open it up. You can sage your deck. Now, you don't have to sage it card by card, but I would definitely spread the cards out as you're saging them. So at least the one of the, you know, the card gets a little bit of the sage. Um, but again, like I always say it's about intention, but I love sage. So I use sage a lot. Um, another way that you can clear your deck, so that's called clearing your deck, clearing your deck of any negative energy, you know, the people that, you know, most of our decks are coming from, you know, processing places that they're going through machinery and stuff like that. So you definitely want to sage it to get any of any, any energy out. So you're clearing the energy of the deck and because you want to kind of put your energy into the card. They're telling me right now to talk about and um, when you're doing readings for other people, it is really your choice. A lot of a lot of readers, and I don't, I don't do. Oh, sorry. sorry, it's getting a call. Um, I don't do a lot of personal, like physical. I do a lot of online readings, so I don't really have to worry about this too much. But when I did do some readings, I don't let anybody touch my deck. I don't because my energy is in here, and their energy just coming to the reading to me is enough. But some readers like to have their, they're called Corinth, um, the person that is sitting in front of you coming for a reading, um, your subjects, your clients, whatever you want to call them. Um, they let them shuffle their deck, they let them, or they will shuffle their deck and just let them cut their deck, or they will let them shuffle their deck. It's really your preference to see if, you know, how, how you feel. Like, let that resonate with you, however you do. If you want them to shuffle your deck and then you take it, cut it, and then deal it out. Um, if you want, if you want to shuffle your deck, give it to them, they cut it, and then, and then you deal it out. Um, or if you just want to hold on to your deck, that's up to you. So you can leave me comments below. Let me know what you guys do, uh, whether you like your energy in the deck or um, have other people. But I really, I don't like people touching my deck. I don't know why. Just that's what resonates with me. It's just that I feel like this deck is so engaged with energy of pure light that I don't want other energy in there. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But um, that's how I feel. So again, I have to do what resonates with me. So... Um, so that's that. So they wanted me to mention that to you, but, uh, go back to clearing your deck. So you can definitely use Sage and a lot of people, and I, I had to like figure this out for myself because a lot of people will have Sage and like, say like a bowl, you know, a bowl like this where it's open and it starts to inflame the house. I keep my, I keep my Sage in like a little, you can see here, I keep my Sage in a little dish like this with a cover. So therefore it's all in there. And I can shut it down and turn it off when I want. And it's not just like flaming out. So that's the other thing that I do with my sage. Um, but yeah, so sage is good. I love the smell of it. It's supposed to be like really good um, for like sicknesses and stuff. And I'm not going to say it, but it's been working pretty well this year. Um, the other way that you can clear your deck if you don't have sage, I always talk about intentions, right? So you can just knock with the intention of clearing it. I clear all energy. I say that in my head. I clear all energy out of this deck. I clear all energy that's not mine. I clear any negative energy in this deck. 
So I'll do that between, um, you know, readings and, and stuff like that. So I'll clear energy. I'll sage the cards. Um, if I am going, if I'm going through, uh, like say if I'm doing some readings for YouTube and then I have to like run out and then I come back, like I'll sage myself again. And because who knows what the hell I picked up out there, right? What yesterday, um, I think it was in the membership group. We talked about like the aura field, the auroric field, or, you know, and you are constantly running into other people's fields and you don't know what you pick up. So I come back, I sage me, I sage the deck. And I also, so if you do Reiki, I Reiki my decks. I Reiki them. Um, I Reiki them right before I read. So I bring in all that energy right before I read. I will Reiki over them and then I will shuffle while I'm Reikiing like this. I'll, and, and then I will be ready to do the reading. So once I started Reikiing my, <laughs> Reikiing, I'm, I'm creating new language, I think. Um, but once I started Reikiing my deck, um, it's, uh, it, they really got, the messages got stronger and more powerful and more accurate. So I always Reiki my decks now um, before I do readings. Okay, so anybody have any questions on that? Hey, everybody, Dana, Jenny, Wanda, Amaria, maybe, Amara. Um, let's see if I said that right. All right, Linda, I haven't owned tarot cards in 20 years. Never let anyone touch them, though. They thought, the thought never crossed my mind. That's like how I'm like, wait, somebody wants to touch my deck? Why do they want to touch my deck? Like, <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, it doesn't cross my mind either. It's just, it's it, whatever resonates, you don't want to do any, especially with this, like you don't want to do anything that makes you uncomfortable. So however you got to do it, if they don't understand, let them go. And that's the other thing. If you are reading tarot for people and you don't get good energy, like don't feel bad to say, I can't read for you, I'm sorry. Like you'll have to find another reader. Because when you try to pull and you're uncomfortable and you're, you're not going to be able to use your intuition if you're not in alignment, first of all. So you're not going to get a re good reading anyway. So if there's any kind of tension or energy that's not good with the person sitting in front of you that you're trying to read for, um, you know, I have the hardest time reading for people that I know very well. <laughs> it's like reading for myself. I have a very hard time reading for myself because your left brain, your ego is going to over... I'm sorry for all this if you're vibrating. Um... Your ego is basically going to be thinking about what you already know, you know, and it's like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. And you're going to go, you're going to combat your intuition. So it's, it's a little difficult and, you know, to read for, for me anyway, to read for myself and to read for people that I'm really close with, because I know so much already that I'm like, okay, I need to give them messages I don't know. And then I'm just kind of like all over the place. So I try not to do that. Um... I like to know the least amount of information so that it doesn't get all up in my head. All right. All right. So I hope that helps for right now. Uh, Ruby says, yes, me too. I have a hard time reading for my family. Yeah, it's really hard because it's like they already know what you know. So I don't know. It's just very conflicting, I say. So I like to read for people that I don't know. Um, and, and to be honest, the way that things come through with me, and this makes perfect sense to me nowadays because I've always had the worst memory ever. You can ask my friends, like, I don't remember anything, like, from my life. Like, not ever anything, but probably about 75% of my life I, I really do not remember, and I'm okay with that now. I had to kind of come to accept that, and now doing this work, I'm like, I probably wasn't present. Like, I really probably wasn't present. I really feel like I probably was channeling during a lot of my life. I just didn't know it. Therefore, I don't remember it because when I do a reading, especially in the membership group, like I'll be channeling a message and I'll like come out of it and I'll be like, what the heck was just said? Like I like it's like I wasn't even there, you know, like I, it's like a dream. Like I could kind of remember a little bit of it, but like I can't remember everything that was just said and it leaves me like back to reality. So it's like when you wake up from a dream and you're trying to remember, that's what it's like for me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So it makes sense. So when I read for you guys, like if I come on live and I read, which I will get back to after, you know, my 30 day challenge here, um, and I'm also going to do it on YouTube. So make sure you're over on YouTube as well. Um, uh, like I'll read for you this week, but next week, please don't, rem don't, don't expect me to remember what I read for you this week. Cause it's not going to happen because it's, it's coming through 
and I'm not gonna remember everything. So don't take offense if I don't remember stuff. So that's also what could happen, <laughs> sharing a little bit of my life here. All right, so today we're gonna start with the Major Arcana. So if you haven't saw, if you haven't seen the other Tarot Tuesday videos, uh, the first one we talked about Oracle decks versus the Tarot deck. The second one I introduced the Tarot deck to you. Um, so that's a good introduction there. And then I think I think we're on the fourth one. So the third one, I basically um, oh showed you how to read the cards without knowing what the cards are and how to kind of read them together. So that was really good exercise. I was really proud of all of you guys. So um, so today we're gonna start to go through each card. And in my previous videos, I told you I'm very straight to the point. So I'm gonna do three cards in one night just because I'm very um, you know I can get the book and read. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you how I feel and how um, the different decks go. Because ultimately, this is you. This is all you. So the way that I do things are not going to be the way that you do things. And the way that I see a card might not be the way that you see the card. So, And that is okay because it's your intuition versus my intuition. I see it differently. You see it differently. But each way is the right way. Okay? Uh, Linda says, I'm finding my intuition is really on point with certain people I know, but I have trouble trusting it. Oh, let me tell you something, right? So I had an appointment, a doctor's appointment this morning. Uh, it's for it's for my kid, but um, but I was supposed to go, and I was like, you know what? Like, I just I should call and just see if we could do this over the phone. Like, I don't really want to go out this morning because my kids were with their dad last night, and I'm like, I really just don't want to like get out of bed and have to like run out. I just kind of want to relax, and so my intuition was telling me this. Like, call her and see if we could do a phone call. Blah blah blah. I get to the office. And now it's like 10 minutes after the appointment starts. And I'm like, so I text, she's not there. And I text and I said, are we have an appointment today? And she's like, oh, I totally forgot. And I'm like, that's what my intuition was telling me. It was telling me to call her. That probably would have reminded her and we could have had her session. So it all worked out in the end, but trust your intuition, trust that thought. And when you start to kind of doubt that thought, it's really your intuition coming through. Okay, um, all right, so we're gonna start with the major arcana. The major arcana is the big things. It is the life-changing things. It is the, you know, uh, the things that you really wanna look at. It's not the day-to-day -day stuff. It is the big life-changing events, okay? Um, so the energy of the major arcana just means that it's like amplified. It's like really, it's really gonna be in your face. Okay, it's kind of like no getting around it. Um, so we start with the major arcana and we go through. And basically it's like a story as we go through. So today we're going to be working with the three first cards. Hey, Chris. Um, the three first cards of the major arcana, which the first card that we start with is the fool. So these are my spellcaster cards. These are the ones that we used last time. And basically... Um, you know, uh, I'm going to show you two different decks. I'm going to show you the Spellcasters deck and I'm going to show you the Crystal Vision deck just because, uh, and I think I said this last video, every deck that I have, it resonates differently to me. The Fool card is kind of always the same a little bit, but it, it's kind of always the same. But you'll see when we get to the High Priestess, it kind of resonates different because I look at the pictures and the energy that I feel off the pictures. So you want to go ahead and check out the last Tarot Tuesday um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But we're going to start with the Fool, and you can see, I don't know if this is backwards for you and if it's going to, probably backwards, but you can see that there's no number on this, it's zero. So again, the Major Arcana is numbered all the way up to 21, 21, 22, the world, um, I can't even, 20, 22 I think, um, but the Fool is there's no number, it's zero, because this is where we start. And the Fool card here, to me, is about taking the leap of faith. You can see here how he is, you know, ready to step off that cliff, and he has no idea what's underneath it. How far he's gonna fall, if there's a step right there, if he's gonna take a big jump, and he doesn't have much with him. He's going on this journey, and he's only got his little, his little satchel here right? His little bag and it doesn't look like there's much in there, but he looks happy. He's like, yes, this is it. I'm going for it. If you can see his face, 
it's like, yep, this is it, and I'm ready for this, okay? So this is the Fool card. So this is about taking that leap of faith, starting a journey. So when I see this in a spread, this could mean, again, however it resonates, especially when I do, um, hey Kim, uh, when I do readings on YouTube, and Patricia, <laughs> I want to make sure I acknowledge everybody. Um, when I do this on YouTube, of course it's a general reading, so therefore, you know, I kind of have to make it very general. So this could resonate in work, in a relationship, in life, and you know, finding your self-confidence and whatever. This is a journey that the person in front of you is about to go on. And this is the beginning of something beautiful because the major arcana journey, it, you know, it's and it's not like all up, 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 up. It's, you're gonna go up and down, up and down in this journey, but you're ready for it. And you're ready to take that leap, even with the unknown of, of how far it's going to take you down or if it's going to lift you up, but you're ready to go on this journey, okay? So this is the Fool card in the Spellcaster's deck. This is the Fool in the Crystal Vision deck. So you can see, you know, it's a little bit more the difference in the decks, so obviously, but you can see she's still standing on that ledge and she's still ready to take that jump, but she's got butterflies around her. So when I see this, it's like, okay, you're ready. You know, you got a little bit lift with you, but it doesn't matter and you're still going for it. This, I'm like, you are going to be on a magical journey because I'm drawn to the butterflies that are flying all around. There's a transformation coming here. You know, a butterfly from a, from a um, caterpillar to into the cocoon, into the butterfly. Like this is going to be an amazing journey. So that's why I like these cards because I feel like they're kind of more healing and more about you and the inner you. So that is the Fool card in the Crystal Vision deck. So you can see um, the difference, but these cards are all about taking a journey. Depending on what's around them will depend on if you know something, right? So if I had a lot of pentacles around this, I'd say like maybe this had to do with career because it's money, um, abundance, all of that. So maybe you're going to be taking a journey, maybe a new job, um, you know, if it had cups all around it, like the... You know, if it had a, um, you know, like two of cups or the lover's card around it, I would say that maybe you're taking a journey with love, you know, so you always have to kind of associate the cards around it. And that's what we talked about last time is kind of reading the cards around it as well. So that is the fool card. It's all about taking that leap of faith, just believing and wanting and moving forward and starting that wonderful journey. Okay. Um, so again, so now this is telling a story with the Major Arcana. The second card now, hey Peggy, is the Magician. Now this card is about manifestation. This is about you are the Magician. Now what do, what do magicians do? They create, right? They, they create things out of thin air. Like it wasn't even there before and now it's there. So you can think of that. What does the Magician do? Well, you're going to manifest. You're going to manifest whatever you want. So this is a very powerful card. So if I was reading this for someone, I would say, yes, like you are, you have it within you to get whatever you want. You have it within you to be whoever you want. So however this card, um, you know, resonates with the person. Now, the, the thing, and again, this is what I will say. Once you start reading your cards, every card's going to mean something different for you. So with this card, when I get this in a, in a relationship spread, this is a player. This is one that can manifest anything he wants. And he can have a lot of ladies on the side or she can have a lot of guys on the side or whatever. So when I get this, and again, this is my personal read, and you will take what resonates with you on your personal reads. And to be honest, I get this from watching YouTubers, watching other readers and stuff, and I'm like, They'll say something and it resonates with me. And I'm like, oh, that's definitely how I see that card. And when you when you do that in your mind, um, I don't know if I said this before, but let me go back there for a sec. Uh, let me go back there in a second. So when you see that in your mind, you're now telling your spirit guides, this is how I see that card. So when that card comes out, they know that's how you're going to read it. All right. So just like your spirit guides are like your mind readers. And they're sending you the intuition. So therefore, when you see, when you resonate a meaning with something, and it doesn't even have to be 
tarot. It could be anything. So when I see a penny on the floor, I know it's pennies from heaven. I say, I always say with my kids. So I know that if they're leaving me pennies, they know that they want me to know that they're here, right? So however you signify or define a symbol or a sign in your head, your spirit guides are aware of that. And the spirits on the other side use those in order to help you um, um, interpret the messages. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, and that's a, like, they'll use things that I know. Like, so, so say if like when spirits are coming through, they will use things that I know. It's crazy how they know all that. I guess it's the energy thing. I can't explain it, guys. Please don't ask me to. But, um, you know, like if I, if they, if I ask them, well, how did, where did this person work? Like, where did you work? You know, they'll show me like jeans to tell me that they were a blue collar worker, you know, or they'll show me a suit to tell me that they were a business person um, because they know that that resonates with me. But if something else resonates with you in that way, then they're going to use those. Okay. So whatever you have already in your brain is what they're going to use. Okay. So yeah. So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, so in a relationship spread, the magician to me means like a player. So if I see this in a relationship spread, I'm going to say, please be careful, you know, just make sure you're watching their patterns and, you know, and, and seeing what they're actually doing versus what they're saying, because they could be a very, you know, they could be a little bit charming and just make sure that you're watching what's happening as well and the patterns that are happening. So that's the magician in this deck. And now this is the magician in this deck. So you can see in this deck, it looks a little bit more like a magician, like a magic person. This one, this one looks like hell get out of his way <laughs> to me. You know, he's got the wings. He's, he's coming through. He's going to take whatever he wants. He's going to get whatever he wants. So, you know, just very powerful card. So same card, different art um, can resonate in different ways for you. So that's the magician card. All right. Any questions so far? Did I say hi, Peggy? Um, all right. Let me think about that for a second. So again, if this is around money or the, you know, the earth cards, all the pentacles, then maybe you're going to manifest money. If this is around wands, maybe you're going to be manifesting a new job, maybe a new business opportunity, maybe a new business for yourself. Um, if this is around water, like the water, uh, the water cards, the, um, the, um, swords, <laughs> like, I'm like air, water, like, oh my gosh. Okay. No, um, cups, I'm sorry, cups. So if this is around cups, depending the cups that are around, and if you're doing a relationship spread and you're talking about an energy, like the person they're dealing with, I would say that this is a player card. If this is just around other cups, like maybe the five of cups or the eight of cups, whatever, I would say that maybe this is manifesting some love. I'm missing one though. What am I missing? Pentacles, um, cups, swords, swords. So if this is air signs with the swords, I would say maybe you're manifesting something with inside of yourself. Maybe you're manifesting getting rid of your beliefs, you know, getting rid of the limited beliefs that you have. Maybe you're manifesting confidence, like whatever. It depends what cards are around it. But um, so that's kind of how I go. And we'll talk about the different suits of the cards, but it all depends on the cards around it. But if I, that's why, like I said, I think in the last video, I rarely pull just one card because like I said, I can't talk that long about one card, but um so I always pull like two or three together to kind of clarify, well, what are we talking about here? What are you manifesting? You're a manifester. Well, what the heck are we manifesting? Okay, we'll pull some extra cards. All right, so the third card in the Major Arcana. So you can see there's a, there's a storyline coming, right? And it's pretty interesting to look at the storyline because it tells you exactly, like if you want to go on this journey, this awakening journey, to get to the world at the end, like to have everything, like you've got to go through these steps. It's like you can't go from the fool to the world without everything in between. It's just not going to work. So it's really interesting to look at the major arcana because it shows you every single step that you need to go through in order to get what you want, 
right? In order to get that happiness, the abundance, all of it, everything that everybody craves, um, you've got to go through each step and you can't miss any, all right? So the next step, so if you see here, we've got to take the risk. We've got to jump off the cliff. That's the first thing that we have to do. We've got to do it. We've got to believe in ourselves. We've got to believe in the universe. And we got to believe that somebody has our back, that when we take that, that step off the cliff, that something is going to be there to catch us. All right? So that's the first step you have to do in order to change. Um, the second thing is the magician. So you've got to manifest. Well, how do you manifest something? You believe you already have it. You, you, you fully heart, heartedly believe that you already have it and that it's coming your way. You don't know how long maybe, but you already, it's already there. It's already like, hold on, I'm asking them to give me something like, a, um, it's like the book is already written. You just don't have it in your hand yet, right? It's like in the publishing, it's doing all that, but it's already written, but it's got to go through this process and that process, but it's already written. You just don't have it. So therefore you're manifesting something by fully believing that it's already out there. It's already created. It's already written in stone. You're just waiting for it to come. Okay. So that's that magician. Now, what's the next step? Love it. The high priestess. The next step is to go and to your and connect to your higher self. This card is all about connecting to your higher self. Now, I don't particularly like this card in this deck just because like it's a little freaky to me with the black face there. <laughs> but um, you can see here, this one resonates with me completely. Like she's an angel. Like you, she's flying. Like I picture her like flying above us. Like get like sprinkling us with like knowledge and dust and and love and beliefs and and all that stuff like this is using your intuition so after you take that risk after you believe that you manifested something that's just waiting to come to you now it's time to really dig down deep into your intuition and start to feel it and start to to move out the the ego you know the um the negative thoughts in your mind that are keeping you stuck and to really start to listen to the to the calmness and to the the little whispers that we are so quickly to be like ah but it's time to listen to the whispers that are coming through because that's your intuition so the third step here in our journey is to focus on hearing our higher selves and the knowledge that it has to give to us so that is and you can see here and again, whatever cards are around it is really what you're going to be focused on. So again, if there's cups around it, you really need to listen to yourself. What is yourself telling you about your relationship? Are you doubting it? Are you, are you, you know, doubting yourself? Are you feeling insecure? Are you feeling anxiety when this person's around you? Like you really, that's all your intuition, right? So when the, the thoughts don't work. It's your body. Your body's going to tell you what is happening. So your body will tell you before your mind will tell you. So if somebody's around you and you're constantly getting stomach pains or feeling nauseous or getting headaches or stress, like your body's telling you something's wrong. And the third step in our journey here is to start listening to that, acknowledging it, being aware of that. So that is the high priestess card. So no matter what deck you use, Again, you're going to look at the pictures. The Major Arcana, though, um, you know, the Major Arcana is kind of pretty set. The, 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 um, the other cards, the Minor Arcana, you could kind of interpret a little, a lot different. But these are kind of set in their way. So you definitely want to know what the Major Arcana is. And you want to know the cards. Like I know we did last week where you can look at the images of the cards and really kind of just use your intuition to see what is going on. But when that doesn't work and you're confused, and I'll even say that, guys, sometimes. You probably even heard me in YouTube with the readings. Like, I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Like, you guys have to comment below because I have no idea. Like, it's really contradictive. Like, I don't know. And then usually when I say that, people are like, yeah, I know. It's like rocky. It's roller coaster. Like, and I'm like, oh, all right. Well, it wasn't just my intuition. It's just like, it's really, that's what's happening, you know? So, um, um, 
So, you know, I just forgot what I was saying. So, yeah. So you just want to make sure that you read the cards around it. Uh, so if this was, again, with cups, like listen to your body, listen to your intuition. If it's with swords, um, that's going to be inner, right? So listen to yourself, really connect, really meditate, like I would say. Uh, if it's with wands, like what's going on with work? Like, are you feeling something and you're not acting on it? Do you feel like you need to get out of there? Uh, whatever it is, right? So you just want to read the cards around it as well. So that is the high priestess. So those are the first three cards of the major arcana. And to me, it um, these are powerful cards, right? So these are really powerful cards. So it proves to us, I'm trying to think of the other major arcana cards. I mean, they're all powerful, but I feel like these first three cards really kind of lets us know that when we're ready to change, it's a lot of this and it's a lot of believing, trusting, having faith, and it's a lot of connection right first. It's got to be there then we start to heal and, you know, do more work and all that. And you'll see that as we go through on Tarot Tuesday. So next week, we'll be talking about probably the next three cards um, in the major arcana, maybe four, because uh, I already did clearing and stuff. So let me see. Good to be on time always. <laughs> hey, Pauline. Um, I'm not doing readings. We're basically learning the tarot on Tarot Tuesdays. I will be back with readings. I've just had a lot going on with the challenge, so um, it drains me and I need help. Yeah, so Pauline, when you when you are feeling people's energy, you wanna make sure that you put a bubble of light around you. And there's different things, um, you know, in the shower, in the sh you have to clear your energy. So if you feel like you're taking on people's energy, and especially when you do readings, like you have to clear. Like last night, I feel like I took on something so therefore tonight I'm gonna to do a major clearing because um, I need to clear whatever energy is around me. So, but the good thing is, is that you start to acknowledge it. And when you acknowledge it and you're aware of it, you can then clear it, right? And you can clear it by many, many ways. You really have to figure out what resonates with you. Um, sometimes I'm in the shower with the water because the water is very cleansing and I will just do deep breathing and kind of like to take my hands and push it away. I, I clear any negative energy that's not mine. I push it away. I push it away. I push it away while I'm doing like deep breathing. Um, that works for me. Sometimes just like, you know, giving the intention to my angels and imagining them swooping in and just re releasing any negativity from my you know, um, energy field also works. So you have to figure out what works for you in order to claim to clear your energy. And, you know, a lot of you guys, especially if you're, you know, interested in reading tarot, you're probably empaths, you know, empaths are people that take on other people's energy, take on other people's problems, like where, um, and like taking them on as their own, trying to fix them and, and stuff like that. So you can look up empaths. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But um, when you are an empath, it's very, very important to practice clearing yourself on a daily basis, on a daily basis, okay? Hey, Nikki, what's up, Wanda? All right. Um, so wait, so let me see. It drains me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Change is scary. It is scary. You know, it is. But change is also exciting because a lot of us are stuck in this place that we're not happy we're not happy. We want change. We just are scared of the unknown. And when you can start to trust your intuition and really believe and trust and become this fool and know that there's more out there for you, that's when it becomes exciting and not scary. So that scariness is coming from that left brain, coming from the ego, right? Your ego does not want you to connect to your higher self because when you connect to your higher self, that ego is gone. It dies. It really dies. Or it becomes, it's like locked in a cage somewhere and with a little, little hole that you can hear it from. And that's it. So it, it is very, um, hey Karen, it is very important for you to uh, lock that ego away, lock that, ne those negative thoughts. And if you watch my videos, you know, I call my Mildred and I lock her away and she's in this basement far, far away. 
and I can only hear whispers, right? So your ego turns into the whispers and your intuition is like, nope, get out of here. Nope, get out of here. And so when you feel that, that's when change is exciting. Like, like, like sometimes I'm emotional and I'm like, yes, I'm releasing something. Sometimes I don't even know what the heck it is, but I'm releasing something, something I'm, I'm, I'm changing. I am growing, I'm evolving and I'm leveling up. And that's what you want. And yes, it's scary because of the unknown. But when you have faith in divine, when you can connect more and hear your intuition and know, like when you, like, it's so funny because, when, you know, like I, I always believed in this stuff and, and everything and my dreams and, and all that. But when people keep telling me like, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that makes sense. And I'm like, really, really, really? Like when you get to that point, there's no not, there's no not trusting. There's no not believing because it's like not all of that couldn't have made sense to all those different people when I have no idea who they are if there's not a higher source, if there's not that energy out there. So when you fully believe in that, when you get a reading and that resonates with you like 100% and that means there's something else. I don't know you guys, you know, like you're in my group and I and I see you posting, but I don't know your lives. I don't have time to go on your profile and look at anything that's happening, believe me. And I don't want to because I want to know less is like less is more for me because it'll get all up in my head. So when you get that reading and it resonates, like that just proves to you that there's more out there. So and when you know that, it's it's easier to believe. It's easier to believe that your angels are with you and guiding you. And when you start to open up and awaken and you start to see the synchronicities and that everything is happening for a reason, like that's when you start to really believe. And then that change doesn't become so scary anymore. It becomes exciting because you're ready for that next level. You're ready to level up and then level up again and then level up again. And we talked about this yesterday, I think, in the Make It Happen where we, we hit that, that ceiling, right? And we crash it. We crash right through it now because we're not scared and we want to and we want to grow and we want to, you know, evolve. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Thanks, D. With my angels, I understand what you've been telling me. God bless. Oh, good, Pauline. Yeah, so if you are ready to take that leap, I do have the program available um, the empower, um, empower yourself to healthy relationships. Like I said, I'm going to come on tomorrow and answer any questions that you guys have for that. Uh, it kind of follows off the get over your ex, but it's so much more than that. This is about taking your life back and, you know, being able to say things and do things and be you with full, full trust and love for yourself and acceptance of yourself and to not be scared of making those changes because you will see that the changes are changing you. It's not like making a change and you're gonna go down. It's like you're making a change and you're gonna shine and you're gonna hear that intuition more and push the negative thoughts out more. So um, if you do have questions, I'll be on tomorrow night around 8.30 to answer anything like that, okay? But yeah, that fool card, like when I see, you know, a lot of people get, get scared when you see certain cards in tarot. The Fool maybe, the Death card, the Tower card. But when I, like I was just talking to one of my friends and she's having all this stuff happen. And I was like, wow, that's like a Tower moment card happening with you right now. Everything is like chaotic and going down. And I said, I cannot wait to see what's on the other side of this. That's the difference. When you look at that Tower card and we'll get there, it's like with the castle and everything's kind of crumbling down. People are like, oh no, oh no. And I'm like, yes, bring it on. Because I know what's on the other side of that tower card. I've been there. My life was the tower card. And now look at it. It's the world. You know, so I know that you've got to get through the tower tower card in order to get to the world. So, which we'll talk about through the Tarot Tuesdays. But don't be scared of it because it's really exciting once you let it be and once you surrender to knowing that there's a higher source out there that none of this is really in your control. And that if once you surrender, it all it all works out then, right? So, all right. So I hope that resonated with you guys. If you're catching it late, just go ahead and watch the replay um, to learn about clearing your deck and, and all that good stuff and the fool, the magician, and the high priestess. So next week we'll be going over the next three cards. Um, 
yeah, so let me know if you have any questions on the tarot. Leave them in here. I really don't get notifications. If you are here with me live, you want to make sure that that little message that pops up to be notified when I go live, make sure you hit that because I can't find any other way in Facebook that you can get notified that I'm live. So I think you have to catch me live and you have to put that notification on. All right, so just make sure you put the notification on so that you know when I go live. So I will be back tomorrow night around 8.30 to answer any questions about the Empower Yourself to Healthy Relationships program, um, what's keeping you stuck, so come up with some questions. Uh, yeah, all right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Much love to all of you, and keep practicing, okay? Bye, guys. Have a good night.